Andy, um, I've, I've shown students how to input the pressure load due to the propellant. And I wanted to get your thought process, you know, how you came up with those, that load to apply and that varying load along the nozzle. There are two pieces of, inf of information that we need. One is the chamber pressure. So for the Saturn V rocket, the chamber pressure is 70 ATM or about 1,000 PSI. And then um, that's the first piece. And the second piece is that uh, we need to know the nozzle geometry. Um, and from Wikipedia and also from, from some of the images I found online and using a ruler and putting it to, to my computer screen, I was able to estimate the, the geometry of the nozzle. So based off of the um, area ratio um, along the length of no the nozzle and the pressure, um, I, I can use a gas dynamics formula called the uh, area Mach relation. And uh, from that, I can figure out what the Mach number and also what the pressure is uh, along the nozzle. Um, it's also found in, in some rocket books like rocket propuls propulsion elements. Um, and then uh, in Excel, I figure out what the distribution is. And then um, I can model that in uh, ANSYS. And admittedly, what I did uh, to make it simple uh, at the beginning is um, I took a look at the midsection uh, of the nozzle where the bolted flange is. And I said, OK, well, what's, what's the pressure here? And then I assigned a constant uniform pressure along the whole body that way. And then I added more complexity to, to, to put in the, the pressure distribution as you have. Let's talk about the how you came up with the forces uh, due to the regeneration channels, which right. you simplified in the model. And you, you, didn't, you didn't put it in the model, but you modeled their effect using a free body diagram. So I wanted to get your kind of thought process on how you came up with those loads. Sure thing. So um, I, I I go back. I'm a, I'm a visual person, so I, I went back to the uh, Saturn V nozzle pictures, and I took a close look at, at at the bolts and how many bolts there were in the image. So I just multiply by two to figure out how many there are in the total body. Um, and uh, I didn't have the regeneration pressure. I I, I couldn't find the source uh, from from the internet. So what I did is I estimated the regeneration pressure as um, the same as, as the chamber pressure as a starting point. And then, you know, in, in the future, if I wanted to do a sensitive sensitivity study, I could just double that pressure and say, okay, what happens uh, to the gapping? So um, the regen channels, which are existent in the, in the nozzle, are not present in the ANSYS geometry. That could be modeled in uh, like as, as a future step, but it's not, I, I didn't feel it was needed uh, in this model because the uh, bolt gapping uh, may not be as, I, I didn't see that as um, affected by the, that actual small geometry. Um, the chamber pressure was 1,000 PSI. Uh, the regen channel area for, for a single tube was approximately one square inch. Uh, th that's what I could estimate from the Wikipedia pictures or the, the Google pictures. Um, so therefore, the regen pressure on one end is 1,000 PSI because it's uh, 1,000 PSI times one square inch, so I meant 1,000 pounds actually. And then the other side is equal and opposite, also 1,000 pounds. That comes from, 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 a, um, a, hand, from a, a free body diagram where we have uh, two flanges, um, and we have a, a pressure uh, trying to separate them uh, of a thousand pounds. So th that's where the regen pressure comes from, or the regen force. Thank you.